What's up, Giggler? Carrie, fix the Wi-Fi. Manifest that shit. We can't be managed. <laughs> I mean, the day just got away from me. What's up, my guacamole gigglers? <laughs> I'm running out. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell? We're running out of things. Okay. We're in person today, which you know skeeves me and Paige out. Yeah, it makes us anxious and awkward. I don't like the intimacy of having to look at you. Don't make eye contact <laughs> this whole time. Thank you. Um also we did announce our live world tour. Um <laughs> Taylor Swift tried her best to sabotage us and it worked. Um, but no, we we have so many dates that we announced. Yep, and second shows to pretty much every single city, which I just, is exciting. So fucking exciting. I mean, the Gigglers are feral creatures. They rapidly got their seats. We do. We did add new shows. I'm just going to look at it for a also second. Also, the aggression in which I got DMs from Gigglers being like, are you going to add a fucking second show? Or like, what's the deal? Or the people <laughs> were like, come to Boston. And I'm like, we've been there seven times. <laughs> Calm down, Red Sox fans. But no, we love them. But yeah, we have seats left in Durham, Houston, Dallas, Phoenix, Huntington, and Minneapolis. And we're working on possibly adding three shows to like Chicago and San Diego. Chicago deserves that because we've really neglected them in the tour. And it's it's not them, it's us. We also spelt their city wrong. And people were like, change it. And we were like, we don't do admin. I spelled it (laughs) Chicago. And you know what? I didn't catch it. <laughs> also, we never changed it. We were like, oh my God. <laughs> Actually, you guys like, get it. <laughs> our like tour manager was like, hey, you misspelled this. And I go, whatever. <laughs> Just because your night is ruined doesn't mean you have to ruin my night. Keep it to yourself. Okay. We are also back on YouTube. And mm-hmm. when I say back, I mean, we don't know when we're going to post on YouTube. <laughs> but you should subscribe because it drops randomly. Randomly. Like we're rogue on YouTube. We, yeah, we are feral on YouTube. We're truly feral. But we have a special episode. We're kind of nervy because every now and then I just, I get a calling from the universe <laughs> to bring on a guest. And we don't do random guests. Yeah. Like we have Sierra on. We have Andrea Lopez on. And that's really it. That's it. Yeah. Because we don't like social interaction in general. No, we don't. But today we have a very special woman in the house. We have... The celebrity astrologer, hel- like hilarious friend, amazing person, Aliza Kelly. Oh my gosh, what an intro. <laughs> Straight <laughs> from the heart. She's never said anything like that about me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we talk about astrology, psychics all the time, so I figured, why not sacrifice ourselves and have Aliza give us an astrological reading on Giggly Squad right fucking now. I knew something was up when Hannah was like, what time are you born? And I was like... Mm. You were like Jesus Christ. You were like mission like, abort. I go, you're my best friend. Just don't hide stuff from me. Okay, I'm nervous, but I want Hannah to go first. <laughs> oh my god. Well, also, I want people to know that Elisa read my chart. You read it months ago. Yeah, and you said some stuff that like really helped me. Really, uh, just understand. Um, your purpose my purpose in life like not to stress about certain things yeah yeah yeah. I should have looked back at the video but like I just remember I'm very existential like when I'm not I work a lot because when I'm alone with my thoughts I immediately go to the darkest places I'm like why the fuck am I here yeah no one's gonna remember me when I die so having you speak to things is helpful for me oh my gosh no one's gonna remember any of us when we die no no one's gonna remember this episode when we die Paige the scorpio is like "Mm." oh yeah she knows baby um so aliza why don't you take us through what you do and then let's get into it i do so many things Mm -hmm. i do so many things but among them i do astrology and when i when i do someone's birth chart i'm using their date time and location of birth So when we pull that up, we have a snapshot of what the sky looks like at the exact moment someone arrives on the planet and how the sky looks when someone is born. In astrology, we believe shapes their personality and their preferences and their timing and gives us a lot of insight on how somebody functions and moves through the world. You know, like the strengths. Chaotically. (laughs) I fully, but I get my chart read at least once a year, day. maybe like one <laughs> what? Once a day. <laughs> and I fully well, that would be fine I with me. fully <laughs> believe in it. Oh, you do? I fully believe that there are like personality characteristics that 
you're just kind of born with. Like, because a lot of my personality, I can see some of it in my parents, but some of it, I'm like, where do I come from? Yeah, and I think that, like, as it relates to parents, too, you know, like, we're always telling a story, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, what happened Hannah, over you don't have to. <laughs> Hannah, you don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> I just like looking like I'm really busy and I might need to run to a meeting at any point. In the a lot changed since I last looked at you. Pat <laughs> said she looked like Shania Twain when she first walked in and she's, it's gone straight to her head. <laughs> She's literally. So I, don't, I, really I don't like making it. everyone's doing a completely different thing on the couch. It feels <laughs> we, the Giggly Squad is really inclusive. Yeah, we're Hannah something for I everyone. Ch- like traded places, it's wild. Yeah, we've swapped personalities. Mm-hmm. I also, I'm gonna warn you guys. I did drink too much coffee before this, and I'm trying to be subdued, but it's hard. <laughs> Is that why your glasses are on? Yeah. Because you're sweating. I'm, 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 I'm sweating. Honestly, I'm about to black out from caffeine. But I do think when you said something to me, because I had just like, I had just left Summer House. I had just left chat room, I think. I was a, engaged. And you kind of said something like, this is totally supposed to happen at this time. Yeah. Because I felt like it was something that like was not supposed to happen to me. Right. And you were like, oh, honey, um, A plus B equals absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that when um, I've heard of this thing? What is it? Your Saturn return. That's it. That's <gasps> it. That's oh it. Oh, my God. That is Wait, it. Are you so yes, impressed yes. By I'm me? so impressed. Oh. But I'm also not surprised because I see your psychic chart. Okay. I see your super Everyone psychic. Everyone tells chart. her she's psychic. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Did but I like, keep telling me? Yeah. I want to just, before you start again, I want to remind people that Paige told me the night of my wedding, like hammered, blackout. We're like on the dance floor having fun. She just takes her like long little finger out and she goes, You're going to get pregnant on your wedding night. And wow. So she went and took a plan B the next morning. My sweet, sweet nephew or niece, kaput. <laughs> 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 but for real, I like had not taken my birth control all week because that's how I take my birth control. And I woke up the next day after having sex on my wedding night, which I did not think I was going to do, with like a little spotting, a little spotting. And I was like, that's weird. I was ovulating, I think. And I literally looked at Des and I was like, do you want to have a baby? And he's like, <laughs> I kind of want to travel for two years. And I'm like, you're 46, but okay. Um, you're half dead, but it's fine. <laughs> you're emotionally and physically deteriorating, but totally cool because you're a man. Um, and I was like, let's go to CVS. Because I was like, it's not that I don't believe Paige is a psychic. <laughs> but like, well, I that's don't. That's haunting. I, I'm On the like, night of your I'm wedding? I'm not going to let that bitch be right that feels like a spell frankly for sure it does. it does i didn't mean to it literally just came out of my mouth i didn't even process it i just saw her and i was like i think you're getting pregnant tonight i was also blacked out <laughs> okay well so that's when the magic really called happened. me the wrong name so that was <laughs> <laughs> stephanie this has been a great wedding <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway i was going through my saturn return i think when i went through a lot of shit in the public eye on reality TV. Yeah, that's right. You were. I think that when we did your chart last, I think it was last year, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or was it late earlier this year? I honestly don't even remember. I don't know what day it what is. A, what a year. What a year it's been. What planet are we on? <laughs> we, I think you were in actually like it was the day of. Like it was exact at that moment. Your Saturn in your chart is at, um, where is she? Two degrees Aquarius. So it was at that time it had like, just really, really started to happen. And can you explain the effects of a Saturn return to people? So Saturn return is when you become your own daddy. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Wait, that's hot. It is. It's a hot time. Wait, wait it means that, so you've kind of like outgrown shit? Yeah. Where you're so like, I'll nurture myself. Yes. Like I know how to take care of myself. Got I it. know what I need. I know how to support myself. And often when that's happening, there is it's really a struggle, right? Because we have to sort of figure out how to move ourselves out of systems and circumstances that were not supporting us and that we were doing. Am I in mine right now? You are like on the tail end of it, yeah. Mm, yeah. But you don't you don't listen. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Paige and I have different tolerances. Like I feel like we both can be fake for a long time, but once I hit my point, and I've decided like I'm out of a relationship or a job or a situation, I can't help myself, where I think Paige has a little more self-control than me. 
Well, I, the universe, like, keeps trying to teach me lessons, and I'm like, yeah, 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 no, totally, I will do that, <laughs> and then I don't do it, and I wait for the universe to literally force me to do something, yeah. right? Or you'll be like, I planned my outfit out for that already, so I can't change things, sorry. <laughs> I also do, I hate change. Yeah, I and mean, I love change. Mm, yeah, we could talk. We'll talk all about it. <laughs> She's like, "Bitch, let me explain it." <laughs> no, I mean, I. You guys have really compatible charts. I also just want to mention, but we'll, we can talk about that. Yeah. in a moment. Okay. Um, the Saturn return is so. Like for instance, Pete Davidson is going through his Saturn return right now, oh which I think God. is very, very interesting. It just feels like it's the gift that keeps on giving. Is he a Scorpio? He is. Mm. Did you know Are that you or could you intuit it? Davidson? I didn't know that, but I f like can feel it when yeah. I see him. Oh my God. Wait, you're going to fuck Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, wait, they're so calling him a U-Haul boyfriend or my like a rental boyfriend. <laughs> my dad actually said that the other day. He's like, I think it's so weird. Like Pete Davidson hasn't seen you and messaged you. And I was like, dad, like, stop. I mean, you're <laughs> is totally your dad a Scorpio a too? Yes, he is. Ah! Actually, today is my dad's birthday. Oh my god! Happy birthday, Happy Gary! Birthday, we love you, Zaddy. Yeah, that's a Scorpio, and I'm a Scorpio rising. Yeah, there's a lot of Scorpio energy here. We yeah. love Scorpios. Wow, me too. Thank you. What yeah. are you, Leo? Oh, of course. But you know, I have some Scorpio stuff going on too. Same as these. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, back to the Saturn return. Very powerful time. Lots of change. We go through it when we're about between 28 and 31. So it's a little different for Isn't everyone, that crazy? Mm -hmm. but it is, you know, a lot of the time, like, you know, this is really when things start to transform in our lives. And as we are shedding who we thought we wanted to be and becoming who we actually are, that is like the integration process, you know, <gasps> that is the journey. 28 to 31. So there's not like people who are like more mature and it happens earlier. No, unfortunately it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. It's, it really is about timing. And it also has to do with, um, you know, I would say that people who go through it really hard are the ones who have found themselves in really hard situations to like wiggle out of, you know, the more established your life is, mm -hmm. the harder your Saturn return is going to hit you. Wow. Which is ironic because you'd think like I have wow. it all figured out because yes. wow. like I'm a Forbes 30 under 30 bitch, you wow. know, but you're actually, but you know what? That's when things change. That is what keeps me up at night being like, why did that happen to me though? Like, you know, when you think of really upsetting things and you're like, I know I've moved on, but like, it's so sad and like, I feel trauma from it, but you realize like, that's literally what like catapulted you in different directions. Yeah, yeah totally. Also, I, I read this quote recently that was like, whatever feels like an end is actually a beginning. Right, because that's the, it's a door. <laughs> okay, Brene Brown. <laughs> okay, slutty Brene Brown. Oh, we love Brene Brown. We love Brene Brown. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so what do you guys want to know? What are you curious about? I've got things. Okay. I want to know, <laughs> I want to know, like, because I've had a lot of people tell me that I'm actually going to get married, not later in life, but later than I thought. And not I want to know bride. if the person <laughs> that I marry, if I stay married to them my whole life, and I want to know at like what age would I start having children? Because I genuinely think, even though I love my career, I actually think that I was born to be a mom. Okay. Let's, let's get into it. Okay. Well, so you I can't even like take care of a little dog. You've made him obese and make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. <laughs> I, you know, the thing is, is that there's some things that astrology, listen, if this was 500 years ago, I would yeah. be able to answer all of these questions like that, right? Because like astrology used to be very much like, how many babies am I having? How's my crop? You know, am I going to like? How it is like, my crop? It's very functional. <laughs> How is my crop? How's I'm, my crop? And by crop, I mean my pubes. I have not. I have you not mowed them down in a bit. <laughs> yeah, that was what ancient astrology was judging. You Length. go, bitch. You need to clean up your crop. <laughs> Length, baby. <laughs> There's some worms in your crop. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> It's the glasses. Yeah, she's a different she person. She thinks we can't see her. <laughs> we can. Oh my god. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you know, obviously, like so much of the way that we now and like modern astrologers, present company included, process astrology is like mm -hmm. through options. 
Okay. You know, like through timing options. Yep. So mm. for instance, if we say, yes, this is a really great time for you to manifest something, you do whatever you want with it. Got it. You know, okay. like you make a baby, you get married, do whatever feels mm-hmm. right. But it's not didactic in that it has to be the way that that energy manifests. And sometimes that energy does surprise us. On the topic of marriage, I feel very strongly that people should not get married before their Saturn return, which is a very hot take. <gasps> okay. I love that. that. Like, a lot of people do get married in their 20s. Yes. I got engaged I will one. say, Me I too. just turned 30. Nothing about the way I feel right now makes me feel like I'm ready for marriage or ready for babies. Right. Even in the next, I would say, like, two years. Yeah. And that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, that's it. if we know that everything is going to change in our lives when we go through a Saturn return and that it, like, comes for you where you are most established, mm-hmm. then, like, why would you want to bring a fucking marriage into that equation? But she's at the end of her Saturn return? Yeah, she's going to be just fine. She's going to be Which means fine. she's she's completing it. She's completing it. Okay. Yeah. It's almost done. Okay. So your Saturn return was occurring. And actually, this is... So I say this thing called There Are No Coincidences. Also, it's the name of my latest book. Oh, how catchy. <laughs> how interesting. And how stunning gorgeous <laughs> is you. that book? A thank manifestation you, you. deck and guidebook. Oh, my I God. Mean, and it comes in a little box? Is that a little a, box? It comes in a box. Wait, that's so cute. <laughs> um, so you are actually, at the time that we are recording this, Saturn is directly on your ascendant. So your ascendant, your rising sign is 18 degrees Aquarius. Mm-hmm. And Saturn right now is at 19 degrees Aquarius. It's going to be, you know, it's it has just been on the ascendant. And it's the last time that it went over, up and over that. So basically what that means is that for the past couple of years, honestly, there's been a lot of sort of feeling of, there's a, a lot of stuff going on intellectually and emotionally and sort of behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of private stuff yes. and a lot of change as to like how much you are supposed to reveal about yourself, especially like your struggles. Mm-hmm. Um, how much do I make this public? How much do I keep this just like within the confines of like <sighs> myself and close people? Yes. Um, but now Saturn has officially gone off of your ascendant and into your first house, which is where you really sort of like become a person and okay. you... Uh, manifest those energies in your life. So it's less about like keeping secrets and it's more about telling the truth. Oh. So now this is, you're in a, a truth era right now. Your truth era. Oh my truth God. Era. Drop some teas. Oh, <laughs> Tell I, us everything. I just have so much. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I begin? <laughs> um, wow. Taylor Swift better watch out. Cause I'm in my fucking truth era. Truth era. But I definitely feel Pages that from you. Like you've yeah. definitely shedded some like any inauthenticity that society has put on you, yeah, you've kind of been like too tired to keep it up. Yeah, I'm like, no, can't. Where before, when you're younger, I feel like you think you have to um, fake certain things or be things that you're not always. Yeah, totally. And I also do feel like from being 28 to 29, completely different person. And from 29 to 30, totally different person. Yeah. I don't know who she is. Yeah. Like, I don't know who the girl was when I was 28. Best year of my life ever. But who is that bitch? But I'm nothing like her anymore. Yeah. Isn't that crazy how, like, yeah. one year you're a different person? Yeah. Well, that's it. It is the season. You know, that's when you're going through, astrologically speaking, like the biggest changes. Yeah. I feel so like you are going to transform. 28, I was like, I was like, you're still so naive, but I was still so scared that so many things could happen to me. And then so many things happened to me that you're kind of just like, oh, I'm not really scared anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think that like it's whatever the circumstances are, it's about sort of this is why you become your own daddy. You know, you learn how to. <laughs> I love that phrase. Yeah, it's the best. And because Sat- Saturn is the the daddy zaddy of the Zodiac. So it's really a zaddy. It's the Zodiac yeah. daddy. So know? like I already have a zaddy, but I don't need him. <laughs> Yeah, kick him to the curb. Okay, good. I mean, there's two zaddies in my relationship, let's be honest. Who are the two zaddies? Me and Des. <laughs> well, now there's three. It's a tr- it's a thruple yes. with Saturn. Yes. But you guys are already like you've transcended your Saturn story. I feel like Saturn, you've uh, like Saturn is temporarily just sort of on ice. Yeah, I got my ass beat. <laughs> what is our compatibility? Like what makes Hannah and I compatible? Okay, my favorite thing about your charts is also very personal to me because your 
moon is in Virgo and your moon is in Pisces, which are opposite. Me and my husband also have Pisces and Virgo moon. Ooh. And I think we have the best compatibility. Yeah. So I feel like you guys are. Yeah. We're wifeys. different. Wifey is over yeah. here. No, we're literally like she's my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So the her cool name is Desorbo. So whenever I like go to text Des, hers always comes up, and I'm like, do I want to tell Des or Paige? <laughs> <laughs> I have like, to, which one of my ways lovers will appreciate this more? <laughs> I love it. Or do I send to him? He won't appreciate, and I'll be like, should have sent to Paige. <laughs> um, so your moon sign is what keeps you emotionally regulated. Mm -hmm. And having moons in opposite signs is really a beautiful flow because what that looks like is you being able to sort of like pass the responsibilities back and forth mm. based on what is needed. You know, mm -hmm. like you are going to be more sort of like granular, detailed, hyper focused on wanting things to look and feel a certain way. Yeah. Um, and whereas you are going to be sort of like, let's go with the flow. Let's sort of imagine this. And I know that you said that you don't really like change. Mm -hmm. That shows up in your chart in your sun sign, which is in Scorpio, mm -hmm. your rising sign, which is in Aquarius, all of these other planets that are in the fixed signs that don't like change. But it, at your heart, you know, what actually keeps you safe is someone who is going to be like, oh, that's okay. We don't have to do it that way. Like we can, we can flip the switch if we need to like oh having the flexibility to be honored to change your mind yeah. and for someone to understand that about you yeah. is like your love language. Anna, you do my love language. <laughs> I will say I've never been nervous to say anything to Hannah or like, I don't know. It's just a different type of feeling when I tell her things. You never feel judged. Never feel judged. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I mean, it shows up. And then also, of course, I'm sure you guys have thought about your rising sign being Scorpio, you being a Scorpio sun. So when your rising sign and the sun sign are the same, it the rising sign is your perspective on reality. Yeah. So your perspective on reality is like, we have to take care of each other. You know, we have to show up and like really be, we need to be there for each other in the ways that other people wouldn't be able to provide. It's very sort of like nurturing. Italian. And very. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. <laughs> did we did we have a McDonald's? Is everyone fed? <laughs> yeah, right. And it's also like very private. You know, it's, it's about establishing that sort of sense of privacy and protection. And then your sun sign is that, right? So the way you live your life is very much aligned with Hannah's perception of reality you know, how Hannah wants reality to go, mm. you're already doing it. Like mm -hmm. you're living that reality that Hannah is trying to create. Oh, Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my God. What compatibility? No, we're so sisters. So like there's no coincidences in terms of like, it's not a coincidence that Hannah and I met. No, of course yeah. not. I mean, and you guys really have extremely compatible charts. We should have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the thing Who's is... carrying? <laughs> Des, obviously. <laughs> is that like, Des, we need your sperm for, like, a quick second. <laughs> Wait, so explain our chart. So you both have... You're a Leo sun. You're a Scorpio sun. Both fixed signs. Yeah. You are a Scorpio rising. You're an Aquarius rising. Both fixed signs. You're a Virgo moon. You're a Pisces moon, both mutable signs. So it, what's really cute about this is that you guys are both hard asses, mm -hmm. but then also super softies, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're a mess. When we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're like crying, it's but also like good. fuck the patriarchy at the same time is exhausting. Yeah, it, it is. is exhausting it is. to be like very sensitive, but also to be like, fuck you. No. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I really heard that. <laughs> Fuck you. And you want to be strong, but you're like, but also I want to be a baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. I know. I'm a fighting it's baby. It's hard to want to be an in charge baby. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. Very Rugrats vibes. Warrior of, like, Stacking up. <laughs> stacking people in Wait, trench so coats. Pages, anything more about Paige's chart and of like where she is now, uh, questions for her future? So, well, I. What What is like the status quo of where things are right now? Like, where would you say? I very much right now love, I really do like where my life is right now. I don't want to change anything. I love my career. Um, and I feel like I want to work more at that. Like, I'm not in a place where I'm like, okay, let's do 
more leisure things or like more settled down things. Mm -hmm. Like I feel this sense of almost like urgency to like work really hard for at least the next couple of years. Yeah. (laughs) For at least a week. (laughs) (laughs) And then we'll nap. So for the, you know, when we're thinking about big life phases, we're going to look at the planets that have bigger orbits, you know, Mm -hmm. that take longer to move around because those are more about what is going on, you know, for that year or for that three year period in your life as opposed to like what's happening this month. Right. So we're going to look at Saturn, which we know, you know, you went through your Saturn return. Now Saturn has crossed your ascendant and it's going to be like about truth time. Feels like good memoir opportunity time, book writing time for that. Um, And then also... Which she can't write, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Leah Michelle, is that you? <laughs> there is a running joke that I don't know how to read, and it's fine. Um, and then also Jupiter. So Jupiter, you went through a very, very lucky transit this past year, mm-hmm. um, which was Jupiter, which is the planet of luck and fortune, on your moon sign, which is about you know your emotional well-being. So I would imagine that some, like, very positive, very auspicious, abundant thing happened Mm -hmm. in like the first half of 2022. And then from there, there's sort of the continuation of that. How do you keep moving forward Mm -hmm. and take whatever that good fortune was and build on it? Okay. So that is something to consider. Okay. Um, Jupiter is going into your second house, which is the area around money. Mm -hmm. So really, honestly, this upcoming year ahead looks like a very solid time for for new finances. A lot of Amazon. We love money. Yeah. I don't know what that is. (laughs) Swiping? (laughs) No one swipes anymore. I I didn't know how to like do the like Apple like tap pay Mm -hmm. and Des did. And that was... That's embarrassing. Really embarrassing. For <laughs> yeah. me. Well, they keep changing it. I feel like I just got the habit of putting the chip in. I know. I just, well, the chip thing stresses me out because they're like, put it in, put it in, take it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Like, ah! <laughs> and everyone's looking at you. And then the tap thing, I'm like, hello, is anyone there? It feels like when you have the automatic water, like you're trying to wash your hands and yeah, it's not coming yeah, out. Yeah. And I'm like, am I a ghost? No, this, the tap <laughs> thing isn't real. The tap thing is not really spending money. <laughs> okay, sorry, continue. I interrupted. <laughs> um, what else is there? I mean, so in terms of like relationship stuff, mm-hmm. baby stuff, you know, like this energy of abundance moving into your second house could also be seen as a time of, you know, that could be a good time for pregnancy. But honestly, like, I feel like get yours, you know, yeah. like this. So if you want my honest read on when it's going to be a good time to have babies, it's yeah. not for a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. That's what I it's feel. It's going to be in like 2025. Yep. That's what I feel. Yeah. What about marriage? Man- marriage is earlier. Marriage can come as early. I mean, marriage could come whenever, right? Marriage no. could come whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> but I would say that probably when Jupiter crosses into your fourth house, which is going to be 2024. Okay. It's probably yeah, going to be like that. marriage baby shortly thereafter. Yeah. Your oh, chart has that. that like movement to it. Yeah, I see that too. Yeah. I feel like right when I get married, I'm going to be like, and let's pop one There out. is a weird thing. The night I got married, I looked at Des you and got I pregnant. was like, I want to make your babies. I did get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you had a spell put on Unfortunately, little you. Des is no longer here with us. But <laughs> <laughs> Kaput, as Paige would say. <laughs> Kaput. <laughs> We're all about family planning or family unplanning here <laughs> at Giggly Squad. <laughs> well, what about you? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, you were did an amazing job before where you were like, honey, you didn't mess anything up. Like, you were, your life was supposed to implode right now. It's true. Um, I'm in a place where... I could see myself having a family, but I also like have this phobia of like having a family. I'm become so obsessed with like being a mother that I might like miss out on potential career stuff that I wanted to do also. So I'm in this like in Like between. you feel like you would like lose yourself a little? I feel like I I'm a, I love my career so much, but if I had a kid, I would just like completely be obsessed with the kid and yeah. and cuz I talked to an astrologer and she was like rude it's well, no, she, <laughs> no, she basically was like i see a lot of opportunity but it's either job or baby right i mean that's how it is so and in my head i was like okay i need to like not have these babies i mean i feel like i'm at the same exact i'm trying i just put a 
fucking but I, survey on Twitter being like, <laughs> does anyone regret having kids? Like, <laughs> whereas so they just don't but know. Like, it's like, Ali yeah. Wong, like her career blew up after having a kid. So then part of me is like, or yeah. am I supposed to have a kid? And that's like a natural progression for me. And that's so like anyway. another phase of your career. Yeah. yeah. Like and mom kids are comedy. supposed to bring. <laughs> mom Honestly, com. kids are so annoying, right? <laughs> <laughs> but th- babies are also supposed to bring luck. Babies are very auspicious and lucky. Oh, things. don't tell me that. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, <I'm> out. <laughs> you better make my life good, bitch. <laughs> She's gonna be a great mother. So nurturing. Oh. <laughs> but okay, full transparency. I don't know if I told you this, Paige. I did not get my period last month. Mm-hmm. And I fully was like, I think I'm pregnant. I took a pregnancy test, it was negative told des he was like you're definitely pregnant took no- i took four pregnancy tests and they were all negative and then i just got my period yesterday so like a full month later and i went to the doctor and she was like this can happen if you're stressed or traveling a lot and mm-hmm. i was like i'm stressed and traveling a lot every day of my life <laughs> but i did go to europe that month because and yeah and you're so cultured yes i was like <laughs> traveling all over europe um Ireland, and (laughs) then I went to Milwaukee. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, the universe is testing me right now. So how did you feel when you thought you were pregnant? Was it like immediate panic or was it like happiness? This is the problem. Society teaches you to to be so scared of getting pregnant. They tell you it's going to ruin your life. Like as you're younger. Yeah. Like as a girl, 16 and pregnant, did anyone see the show? It's literally like, and it's like you're going to get nightmare. pregnant if you yeah, even. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, will yeah. get pregnant, then you will end up on a reality TV show and yep. fight with your boyfriend and your mom the entire time. Yeah. Which, not so far from reality. So <laughs> I, at first I was really scared, but then like Des was like weirdly calm. And then I met my brother's new daughter and I fell in love. <laughs> Um, so I feel good about it, but that does low key scare me. What what is my chart telling me to do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I feel like this is gonna be the these next couple of years are going to be that journey for you. You have Saturn in your fourth house of home and family. Did you move? <gasps> I I got an apartment. Cute. That's called moving. Then yeah. I'm gonna. Well, it was next door. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's next door to Des's apartment. But you, but we're gonna it. renovate it yeah. and, and take down the walls. Oh to yeah, make yeah, it like yeah, a yeah, yeah. One commune. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is <laughs> <laughs> also known as a two bedroom. <laughs> Sorry, a two bedroom in New York is a com is a commune. <laughs> you could fully start a cult out of a two bedroom. It's Easy. pretty much Easy. a small country. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Built it washer and dryer, Full. and I've been oh, yeah. decorating. Like I've been very into this like. Crazy so yeah, space. she's had like a new. Yeah, I think that. I love that for my chart. You're explaining it, and for your chart, I was explaining it. I'm like, what's happening with the with the marriage? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that that's where you're kind of at is like figuring out the integration of home, family, career. You know where you, what it means and what it looks like for you to have a family. Mm. You know to make it something that because obviously it's not going to be. Are like Are there what more other cats things. involved? <laughs> No, no, no. hundred <laughs> percent not. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, it does keep vetoing that. <laughs> no more cats. Because um, I have another apartment. I'm like, I could put another cat in it. <laughs> and Des was like, you can't even take care of your own cat. We're not getting another cat. Is that his voice? Yeah. Like, that actually literally to is a spot tea. on. Yeah. To a T. <laughs> so yes, tell me what the plan is. Tell me. So I think the plan is figuring out, like, is doing this renovation, doing this construction, bringing the lives together, figuring out what that looks like, and Mm -hmm. then creating systems that are going to make you feel like it would be possible for you to bring a family That's literally what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Is trying to find a system that, because also like Paige, I'm in my like crazy work zone where I work all day. I do stand up every night. It almost feels like I'm a bartender with a day job and I'm getting like really burnt out. And I realize long term, I can't keep this up unless I have systems in place for like rest, yeah. mental health, hobbies, time with my husband. What are your hobbies? Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I started cross stitching. Oh, yeah. I have started cross stitching. I bought this Lululemon mirror. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was $700, 
And I did a workout yesterday. Good for you. Which got is your money's worth. Crazy. So it. yeah, yeah. That's like so one. Never class. One class. You never have to use it again. It's one soul cycle wow. class. It, all you need is one. <laughs> I also I like to drink coffee now. I like to eat hobbies, hobbies, hobbies. I love petting my cat. So when you say like systems in place, it's really more like okay, how could I? work a kid into this schedule crazy lifestyle yeah. cuz also and like into the home and Des was based in Ireland for so long so it's figuring out like what his life looks here day to day the traveling between us mm -hmm. um basically my mom I'm, my mom's going to raise my child is what i've <laughs> learned <laughs> yeah Cute. I mean, she's going to be amazing. I love it. I love that. Yeah. But it's true. Uh, finding, because right now there's no structure for like a child to be there. Yeah. I think that that is. You could probably use a cleaning lady. <laughs> I would or say. <laughs> cleaning person. Cleaning person. Mm -hmm. I would say before you have a baby, you have to trust that you would be able to have space for one. So maybe after the renovation. Definitely after the renovation. Okay. I'll tell Desa. Yeah. Oh, I like that. What What month or what year are we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> What's the timing? Yeah. So Saturn is going to be moving. It basically Dude, just got Saturn into your fourth house. Saturn is stressing me the fuck out. It's a lot of Saturn with you no, ladies. No, Saturn's wild. But also, I have one, one last other question. We have a feeling that I'm going to get a girl. I'm going to have a girl that's going to be exactly like Hannah, and she's going to have a girl that's going to be exactly like me, and that's stressing me out more than it stresses <laughs> Wait, Hannah why is it stressing you? I'm because sorry, if, your child's going to be a Division One athlete? Because if I, yes, if I have a daughter that I can't relate to in But you that relate to way, me. But you relate to me. Yeah, but like oh, not yeah, well. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I laugh at you. I want to laugh with you. <laughs> but I wonder, like, you probably can't see that. But like, <laughs> do we have good connections with our children? <laughs> yeah, of course. I don't okay, need to good. look at the astrology okay, to say good. that. Good. But also, like, if you, but that's part of your flow. That's like while you, you know, being best friends and soulmates. Yeah. Don't marry a weirdo. I'm, I'm trying not <laughs> to. It's oh, literally yeah. trial and error. I'm not gonna ask so her because I know the answer. Des and my child's gonna be literally insane. <laughs> the most annoying kid on the block. Yeah. <laughs> Never shut up. We'll be so sarcastic, have an attitude problem. Yeah. But we're willing to deal with that. Definitely You're like, but we love them school, anyway. But we'll love them anyway. <laughs> literally gonna be the disruptive kid in class. Yeah, talks too much. Um, I also I wanna tell you guys something else that I just saw in your charts. So your rising sign page mm -hmm. at 18 degrees of Aquarius is exactly your fourth house cusp, which is home and family. So really my advice is to take her advice when it comes to figuring out like home and family stuff. So just for ask you. her? Yeah. Like she has good wisdom as to how <laughs> to structure a life. Okay, you just made her head so fucking big. <laughs> now I'm going to get a text from you her. You will her. listen to me, Hannah. <laughs> hey, Paige is going to run my family planning. She's like, did you fuck tonight? <laughs> You would honestly. I'm this texting you at like 3 a.m. Hey guys, uh, just to let you know, Hannah's ovulating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So you're saying that she's better at planning out? No, my no, no, life. not better. <laughs> but like, she has insight that you need. Do you have anything for career with me? Yes, of course. So, what we had going on over these past this past year and a half are eclipses in Scorpio and Taurus. And because you are a Scorpio rising and then your rising sign is your ascendant, your descendant is the opposite. So that's in Taurus. This means that basically like your perception of reality as well as the people that you um, collaborate with have been going through transformation. There's been a lot of change as to like who you want to be, how you want to show up, and then who you want to show up, like what you want to show up relative to, if that mm, makes sense. Yes, that's um, nailing it. So we just had these big eclipses this past month. Um, in Taurus and Scorpio. So I also am wondering if like anything meaningful has happened within the past, let's say six to eight weeks in terms of like career stuff for you. I, I am pretty big on TikTok right now. <laughs> well, I've been like really enjoying. This is the internet Hannah Burner. This is the internet Hannah Burner. <laughs> TikTok, I've been like, I started as a comedy video producer where I, I would just make funny videos and create content. And now like I've kind of come full circle where I'm now just doing it for me. I love waking up and just I love posting funny videos. And I also I'm kind of interested in getting into comedy acting. Ooh. So I started doing some auditions. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's so exciting. Thank you. I'm really bad at memorizing lines, but I'm working on it. <laughs> 
It took I me eight it. hours to <laughs> get one thing right. I Prax- almost got divorced. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I do think that changes as it relates to like w- how you are framing yourself are continuing to be in development. Yeah. And right now, you know, from this eclipse season, I would imagine that there's been a lot of, I mean, if you just started auditioning also like recently, like that could be very much your eclipse story. Yeah. And then as it continues into next year, it's continuing to push that further along continuing to put yourself out there, being brave, being courageous, you know, all of that scary stuff. I love that. I also think Paige and I both obviously love entertainment and I've tried out a lot of different like forms of entertainment and I feel like I'm finally naturally like gravitating towards what I want to do where before I felt like not always in the right place with entertainment. Yeah. And like I, you know, as we were talking about, like with the permission to change your mind, you know, as you're a very, you're a Leo, right? And Leos are very creative people who like always need to be making something yeah. and expressing their art somehow. Always, or then I'm stuck with my own thoughts. Exactly. <laughs> so it's important for you to also like give yourself permission to do different things mm. and not feel like you ever are like, I found it. Because as soon as you find it, there's going to be something else that you're like, I want to explore True. that. And that's not a bad thing. That's True. a good Especially thing. Especially with my ADHD. Yeah. I was going to say, you do always have ideas like, we should do always. this and we should do that. And like, I'm going to do that. Yeah. I love an idea. Yeah. I mean, it, the <laughs> blessing of ADHD too, you know, mm-hmm. like always having something else that you're thinking about. A lot of moving pieces. Manifester. Any big events I should look out for. <laughs> Is the world <laughs> any coming variety? to an end? Is the world coming? <laughs> I, when do you think I'm going to have a baby? I think you're going to have a baby. <laughs> I think you're going to have a baby when, when Saturn goes into your fifth house, which is, I think, in like 2024. Oh, oh, late. No, because I'm having one in 2025. I mean, that would be perf. What is it, 2022? Okay. Oh, did you want one earlier? I could. I would that's say really only a year away. We're about to be in 2023. Oh my God, you're so right. Yes, 2024. <laughs> you're like, cause yeah, you got to start right now. Sorry, yeah. I like thought it was 1991 for a second. <laughs> 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 Do you ever just like think it's the 90s? It was the Actually, 90s like a second yes. ago. Like 1998. No, <laughs> Someone said the year the other day and I was like, it's 2010, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Ludacris just came out with a single, like, <laughs> like Fergie, the Black Eyed Peas. Hello, how is it 2022? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's terrifying. That's amazing. Um, yeah, because okay. it does. It takes nine months. I've heard. True. <laughs> right? I've heard. I, I have heard that. that in. Yeah. Okay, wait. That sounds gorgeous. And okay, is there anything bad I should look out for? No, I mean, I think that like the stuff that's been going on has with been the pretty bad. Has been bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're good for a while. <laughs> You've endured no, a lot. No, I mean these eclipses for both of you. Yeah. You know, for all all of our Scorpio babies, all of our Taurus babies, our Leo babies, our Aquarius babies. Like, it's been a lot with the eclipses. It's been yeah. a lot of like surrender has been the key Ooh. word. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. And who wants to surrender? Ew. I know. You know? Is there anything you see business-wise for Paige and I together? Um, Yeah, I mean, because your rising sign, your rising sign is 18 degrees Aquarius, and your IC, your fourth house cusp, is also 18 degrees Aquarius, like, you guys really are synced up with opportunities professionally, you know? Like, there is... (laughs) It's cool she because she did start an Amazon store friend. Just <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's really good. There <laughs> you go. But yeah, so our like split. good fortune in work is like aligned. It is, and like you don't always see that. You know, there are some collaborators, and also like in relationships where the timing of them is just like it's constantly like flipping between one person and the other. I will which say, is whenever something happens in our careers individually it kind of does happen at the same time like if it's not giggly squad related it's like something personal Mm -hmm. it does happen like around the same time no i feel like we're in like a a, what's the water what's a smooth (laughs) smooth sail (laughs) choppy sail smooth (laughs) river ocean river you know when you go whitewater rafting i've never but i've seen (laughs) i've heard it i would rather (laughs) never yeah 
I feel like we're on the same like lake, like Got going it. together, you know? Flowing. Yeah, we're flowing together. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I thought that was going to be deeper. I, I just can't <laughs> wait to text Hannah and be like, whenever you're ready to have a baby, don't worry, text me and I'll let you know if it's allowed. No, you yeah, literally Paige should your not doula. have told she is. She's is she gonna pull the baby's <laughs> head out of my pussy? <laughs> oh my god! It literally <laughs> pull it out. Bring, bring your child into this world. Wait, I should not have been she is. given she, this power. Wait. So do I bring anything to her? No headaches. <laughs> <laughs> she goes. Just, just stay away. Well, I think that you are kind of, in a way, like aspirational for Paige. Oh. I yes. Fashion wise. <laughs> <laughs> no, that actually keep going because that checks out. Yeah. I mean, so Hannah's life, Hannah's sort of like the way that she, especially in her relationship, mm -hmm. in the way that she has sort of been able to create this safe space for herself yes. is very aspirational for you. Yes. And it's something where you're so like, true. I, that is something I aspire mm -hmm. to. That's something Am that I want to bring Am I going to continue that or is that going to go bad? It's going to continue. Like it doesn't have an expiration date. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Okay. No, you got it. You figured it out. That was your Saturn return. Oh, yeah. 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 Imagine like in an interview just being like, oh, yeah, my Saturn was returning. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> of course I can. <laughs> of course I can. So you told that person to go fuck themselves. <laughs> Saturn said that. <laughs> that was Saturn. <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. Um, oh my God, I love that so much. We also are big believers in manifestation on this podcast. Is there any advice you would give to the gigglers in terms of manifesting? Wait, because I do have a question. I keep seeing videos where it's like, there's like one part of manifestation where it's like, you keep thinking about it, you keep talking about it, you keep saying it, but there was someone that was like, that's not really manifesting. Actual manifesting is like pretending that you already have it and you act like you have it. Ooh. And then it comes. What do you think like is the best way to manifest? I don't think there's any best way. Okay. I really think that it is, there are so many different approaches and styles and especially mm -hmm. like, you know, manifestation. TikTok is like, off the fucking yeah, charts it's with so like wild. different yeah. techniques. And yeah. all of them are fun. They're like sacrifice a yeah. lamb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At exactly 12.01. And you're like, mom. They're like doing their makeup. I lamb this week. <laughs> <laughs> Where can I find a lamb? <laughs> <laughs> you know what the kids are doing on TikTok. <laughs> They're sacrificing goats. Yeah. You do a dance with your lamb. <laughs> lamb, get over here. <laughs> Which is totally fine. It's a very viable manifestation strategy. Mm -hmm. um, but like, you know, 1111 or 1111 necklace girly. Like, I yeah. see 1111 every day. Yeah. And that's because I'm on my phone all day. So <laughs> I always see it. So like, you know, making a wish, manifesting at that time. Beautiful. Love that. Manifesting on a new moon or full moon. That's like my jam. Love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But I would say like my greater philosophy with manifestation is figuring out it's getting to know yourself so well and so intimately that you know that you can see the life that you want to create for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then it's sort of like measuring the distance between where you are now and where you want to be. And okay. any way that you can then sort of feel like figure out how to leap into that truth that mm -hmm. is your own already is the practice of manifestation. You know, can you give us an example? Yeah, so like I would, so during eclipse season, like we just had, I don't manifest during this time because this is a time of resetting. It's a time of reflection. It's also historically like very chaotic. So things that, you know, you don't kind of want to fuck with the energy. It's a little too volatile mm -hmm. during eclipse season. But now after eclipse season, it's sort of like we're looking at everything that happened. We're reflecting on like this was really positive or this really was not where I wanted to go or I thought I wanted this and it turned out very differently. So we're taking new inventory of what our reality is. And then from that reality, we're also going to then be like, okay, well, where do I want this to lead? You know, what did I learn? What is the kind of future that I want to have following this? And then you can write that down. You can meditate on it. You can tell it to a close friend. You know, I think speaking things out loud is really, yeah, really powerful. I agree. So um, it's like, let's say you want to write a book. It's literally being like, okay, what steps? So first you, it's focusing on sort of what happened, what kind of book you want to produce and bring into the world. 
you know, because there's the right, there's, there are books that no one reads. <laughs> there are books that are just for you. Mm -hmm. There are also books that are really big deals, you know, with like a lot of attention and visibility. So it's important to sort of have that specificity when you're manifesting because writing a book could be so many different types of things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it could be that you can't, don't have time for anything else because you're writing your book. Mm -hmm. Or it could be something where you're like, yeah, I'm going to write this all in two months. And then I want to just like churn this out really quickly because I want this out in 2024, you know, like whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it's being really hyper specific and not vague <clears throat> about yes. your manifestation. Yes. Yeah. And then from there, you know, to sort of like chart the difference yeah. between where you are now and where you want to go. It's using different pathways to get there. So it could be making wishes at 1111. It could be setting intentions during a new moon, releasing things during a full moon. Um, it could be doing like, you know, writing things down, sort of creating your own like affirmations, mantras around it, mm -hmm. um, having, taping something to your mirror, um, living that life, you know, yep. already sort of in your psychic mind, setting yourself so that when you go to sleep at night, you're saying, thank you so much for this like beautiful day. I love my book. It's a New York Times bestseller. I'm so proud of it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like, so it's, there's lots of different types of ways to chart the difference. But I would say that that is probably the most important thing about manifestation is sort of as having a direct focus and knowing how you want to, uh, and knowing where you want to go so you can figure out how to get there. Mm. I'm a big write stuff down person. And I was just telling someone literally like the other day, forget who it even was, because they were like, did you ever think Giggly Squad was going to be as big as it was? And I felt like an asshole because I was like, uh, yeah, actually I did. <laughs> and I was like, because when we started, I feel like we had so, I had so many random people being like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, what even is this? And I genuinely in my head never had any other thought than, no, I think it's going to be huge. And like, that's just like what I lived by. And when people would question or say something like, do you think it's going to like, do you think this is like a good move? I would just be like, what? Yeah. And then like right. move on. Like I never even let the thought come into my brain of like, oh, what if we don't do well? And like, what if we fail? And what if our friendship, at like none of those thoughts I ever even like had. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we, we almost didn't manifest Giggly for being successful. We manifested it being like a safe space yes because i was like yes even like okay let's say we don't make any money from it it was never met it was a place for Paige and i to make each other laugh so it was really more like carving out a play date time like, literally okay like we're gonna hang yeah. out like, <laughs> and that's like because if someone said if someone said to you like Paige, do you think we'd be like selling out theaters i'd be like i don't know but if they said yeah. do you think every episode is going to be entertaining i'd be like yes yes and isn't that the like gateway <laughs> you, you. <laughs> Aliza where can people follow you where can be, they buy your books give them all the tea I'm at Aliza Kelly everywhere and you can buy the books wherever books are sold spell Kelly K-E-L-L-Y <laughs> okay sometimes people do E-Y it's true when it's a last name you're right you're right it's true it's just yeah. no E well okay. one E one and I you have one e. some really fun books I do this is my fourth book oh my god amazing yeah Amazing. Well, thank you so much yes, for gigging with you. us. We're thank obsessed you. with you. Do you do any personal readings or what is the vibe on that? I don't, but I do run a virtual community called the Constellation Club where I do new moon and full moon manifestations. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so twice a month, we're manifesting. Obsessed. Okay, yeah. We're yeah. obsessed with that. The, giggler, that. the gigglers love a yeah. manifest moment. We love a small cult. Oh, oh yeah, God. yeah. It's it's like a light cult. Yes. L-I-T. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for coming. We love you so much. We thank the moons and the stars. Thank you. And love you. the oceans. We love, love, you. Love, you. love you. Bye. Bye. Yay. That was good. Uh, I feel like you were, we were nervous, but that was insightful. I was nervous, but dude, I'm a fucking psychic. Every single person I've ever talked to is like, mm. Yeah, I'm, she sat down and she's like, I need like, to like psychic. hone in on it. I told you once someone told me I might be psychic and I got in an Uber and I just stared at the driver and I was like, <laughs> what is he thinking? And I tried for a minute and I was like, fuck it. I had a psychic say that my powers don't really, really come out until I have kids because <gasps> I must be like very psychic. About, I think I'm going to be very strict. Like I must know, like you're smoking weed. 
Oh my god, you're gonna that's either give it to me or like, Mom, cut it out. <laughs> not again. <laughs> I was just thinking about it. <laughs> wow, I fucking But love sometimes that. like having kids like changes your your genetic like yeah, some makeup. people say people who have bad migraines, they have kids and then they don't get migraines anymore. Very interesting. Like your hormones like go into a new place. Oh my god, twenty twenty five, we're gonna be moms. No, that's scary. Cause it's literally okay, it's basically twenty twenty three. Yeah. So we have two more years. To like nap. Not even because we'll probably get pregnant in 2024 because it takes nine months to cook that thing. Oh my God. But I'm going to eat so much food when I'm pregnant. I can't wait. I can't wait. Speaking of, it's freezing in New York City, Mm -hmm. which means the dogs with coats are out to play. (laughs) These dogs think they're so much better than me. I saw a coat with a fuck, uh, I mean, a dog with a fucking turtleneck. I like it. He was, he literally looked at me and goes, (laughs) oh. I like the dogs with shoes. Oh, yeah. The shoes are cute. And I feel like kind of necessary in New York City. The dogs downtown wear scarves. <laughs> the dogs downtown are different. They also wear like berets. Yeah. They also are like doing K. <laughs> <laughs> they have jobs. They have, job. they have creative jobs. I, I was thinking they're all creative directors. I was thinking also, and I posted this on TikTok but I had a revelation about men in hats and okay. I want to run it by you. Yeah. Like a true epiphany about men in hats. Yes. And I'm, I've got, I posted it and I got a lot of messages saying this is science. You're right. Yep. So I don't want to freak people out, but it's accurate. If a man mm-hmm. is wearing a hat mm-hmm. for anything besides the weather, such as like it's hot out or it's cold out. Yep. His job, he's required to wear a hard helmet mm-hmm. or is that what it's called? Hard hat. Hard hat. Or for sports, you're a Yankee. Good job. You yep. did it. <laughs> Congrats. Then you are problematic. Yes. Can I tell you the number one hat that like if a man is wearing, I'm immediately turned off and like don't even approach me. Don't even try and hit on me because I do have to say something rude to you. What? One of those like Aspen hats, like those wide rim, like not a cowboy hat that they put on like the back of their head and it kind of like sits up and they like have a hand tattoo so a wide brim hat yeah that is possibly literally... a feather in his cap okay <laughs> so that is the first man that i spoke about we've all met men like this those are the guys who do not have a personality but they're trying to pretend they have one because they have a feather in their hat yeah and, and i they try to act like they're so much more interesting than no, they are i can't do it i need more of like a <sighs> No hat. Like Nike wearing sweatpants, t-shirt, hoodie vibe. I want like my man to look at those hats and be like, what? No, I would never wear that. But Paige, I would argue mm-hmm. guys who wear like actual baseball, like Nike hats, like New York dudes don't believe in therapy. No, they don't. I'm gonna, but I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> that's better than the wide brim. I'll take that like over a wide the brim. The most boring men. Um... Men who wear fedoras are just like so mm. weird in bed. Like not freaky, like not okay. I don't think I've ever like seen a man in a fedora, really. You're going to start seeing in the fall the men, the hipster guys who wear the like beanies just like on the I tip of their head. On the no, tip no, no, of their no, no, head. No, 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 no. It no. looks like you're putting on a condom, but you don't fully put it on. Okay, I'll take that if we're downtown and you're wearing a really cool sweat but no, look. But Paige, I'm telling you, don't take it. Okay. They're all red flags. Men like that can't commit. Okay, they can't agreed, even commit agreed, agreed, to agreed. fully putting a hat on. <laughs> How are they going to commit to multiple dates with you? Agreed. I've never gone on more than two dates with a guy that wore also, a beanie. That means he got up in the morning and was like, what hat am I going to wear? And that's an ick. That's an ick. Further fucking more, men who wear cowboy hats think um, being gay is a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's on Yellowstone, I don't want it. No, 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 no. No. Um, what's another, oh yeah, men who wear their hair backwards. Wear their hat backwards. Their hat back, like a backwards hat. Yeah, Um, I'll take that. They think that no means yes in bed, so. Yeah, they played lacrosse. But I do have to say, even like, let's take Craig for an example. Mm -hmm. I feel like hat wearing Craig is a different Craig. For sure. Hat wearing Craig. Is not ready for marriage. Douchey. Not ready for marriage. Gets a little too drunk. Yeah. Turns me on. Not in a healthy way. Not in a healthy way. In a toxic way. Not hat wearing Craig. 
you know, might check in on like the home insurance plan. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Knows when the policy is up. Exactly. Knows when to renew a contract or something. Yes, exactly. I just think guys who wear hats for any other reason besides what was previously stated are hiding something. Mm Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time it is under baldness. their hat. Yeah. A lot of the time it is baldness, yep. which is okay. But there's something hot about a guy who's just bald. Yep. And embraces with a beard being bald and just rocks it. I'm I don't, telling you. I don't want that per se though. I feel like. Never knock it till you try it. <laughs> like a full no. Duck Dynasty beard? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. They're hiding something too in their beard. And yeah. normally it's snacks. Um, so yeah, that's something new that I think we really need to remember as... Women. A commune. Yeah. Um, what's going on in front page news? Um, Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde broke up. And I feel like people were... I don't know if the community was devastated. I certainly wasn't. Like, When do you think they actually broke up, though? Probably, like, a couple months ago. Because I, f- I would say, like, the, first, the last time she was seen at one of his shows. I feel like they were weird during the press. Like, they weren't standing near each other and stuff. Yes, for the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they were trying to do that on purpose, but also I feel like that was probably when it was starting to be like, eh. Mm -hmm. Also, I just don't, I genuinely don't think you can date a younger guy. I really don't. Oh, hot take. Hot, hot take because we date older men and they're still stupid. Mm Mm-hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I'm, I think I'm way more mature than Craig and he's a solid five years older than me. I also, relationships are as simple as they seem where like you just need to spend a lot of time with people and have trust with them and enjoy each other. These celebrity relationships, like you're dating Harry Styles, who's on tour every night traveling. Yeah. You have a whole family that you left. Yeah. (laughs) That there's drama in the press with. Plus you're having like public beef. I'm sorry. At some point, if you're Harry Styles, you're not going to be like, I don't need this right now. Right. Or is she going to be like, I don't need to be like waiting at home alone, dealing with this press bullshit while Harry's on tour. I don't know. It just, it makes sense. Yeah. It didn't like shock me. And then also, what did you think of M. Rada and Pete Davidson, like PR picks? You guys, I feel like someone told me, actually Maria Menounos, not to name drop, but I'm name dropping, cornered me Mm -hmm. and said, I listen to Giggly Squad and I love your and Paige's chemistry. (laughs) I was like, I was jizzing. I was like, this is an actual <laughs> real journalist talking to me. Wow, I haven't. And she said she loves our take on stuff because she was like, because you guys actually kind of know the ends of things. Yeah. And you're speaking from a place of like knowledge. Mm-hmm. So you guys, when we, we've like, we have, I've experienced if working it feels with the PR weird, team. It's probably weird. I just think people that post on Instagram, like after the first date or like the first sighting, do you remember when, it's like not real. Do you remember real. when Julie Fox did a full article for first date with Kanye West? But yeah, that but she's was iconic. performative art. But that, yes, that was different. My and new religion is Julia, Julia Fox. Fox is my new, I want to be the Julia Fox comedian. Have you ever seen her TikToks where she wakes up in the middle of the night because she thought of something that she had to tell the community? Those are my favorite. Those are my favorite. Yeah, and you, her bleached eyebrows yeah. are just like on fleek. I will say her on Emrata's podcast, I saw like watched a few clips. I <laughs> love her. Yeah, Emrata was like, I hate men, but I just like love sex. I'm just so wet all the time. And Julia Fox was like, yeah, I could do without it. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> I actually would rather not. And I not. kind of loved it because there are some times like as a woman, you get into a phase and you're like, if I never have it again, what am I missing? Like, For sure. My life. I also love that Julia Fox, she is the epitome of decentering men from your life. Like all her fashion choices have nothing to do with men. You can tell yeah. like they're like man repelling mm-hmm. and it's gorgeous, stunning, every, honestly aspirational to me. Yep. But there's a video of Amrata and Pete Davidson like him picking her up on a date. In what hallway were they in? Like, I was that like that the, was a crack den? Like what? Wait, where were they? That there was a paparazzi that close to them. Well, the woman was saying like all of Emrata's photos are by the same photographer. Yeah, which is not a coincidence. It's not like one guy's stalking you. You clearly have his number, which is totally okay. I think it's totally. I fine. love. She got her out of a relationship of a man that broke up with her. Rebrand, girl. Yeah. Get those paparazzi pics of you looking insanely stunning, walking your dog and holding your child as yeah. an accessory. But also, if, I'm here for that. Then what are you not here for? 
I'm not here for like the fake romance. Like I'm here for the spectacle. I love a spectacle, mm-hmm. but I'm not here for like the fakeness of like, are you guys really in love? Are you guys dating? Like I want like a, I want a real love story that I can like watch. Paige, that's beautiful. Thank you. But that's not real life. <laughs> I know. Someone literally was joking. I think it was Violet Benson said, Pete is a rent-a-boyfriend. So like when you need a little like- He's good luck Chuck. He is. And when you need a little bit of like um, excitement in your press, mm-hmm. a little press bump, you like go on a couple Imagine if that was a girl though, how much hate she'd be getting. Yeah. But this video, it showed like Emrata standing there waiting for the camera to pan to her. And then she like walked over and it, the whole the whole thing is, I, it's what I said to you. If you want to be private, you can be private. But I'll literally watch Emrata do anything. Oh, for sure. Like I am obsessed with her. For sure. I just think it's it's nice for the public to see that there's like the things that, but that also, people want you to see versus not. Also, she did break up with her husband. Like if I was that famous, there are probably certain things that I would do solely for that man to see it. Like that yeah. is my, like I, there's nothing I love more than revenge. I have to say, um, it gets me up in the morning knowing um, that my haters are my biggest fans. Yeah, I love it. I like to just, sh- certain ex-boyfriends I need to be more successful than. And um, that's what keeps me going. You see yeah. that TikTok trend where it's like, he broke, he, you know, did something horrible to me. So now I have to go into his career, become his boss <laughs> and fire him. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God. I hope you guys loved giggling with us today. This was such a fun, unique episode. We normally don't have guests. This was a unique episode. We did give a little speedy giggly at the end, but I think it was important to get our charts read. Yeah, it was. Um, That was admin that we took care of. In the public eye. And let me know what you guys think. And our tour dates are up. Also, our new merch is up. Paige is wearing it. Podcast hotline. Check out our YouTube. Um, And we love you guys so much. Bye.